Hello and welcome to this Python tutorial. So in the previous tutorial we introduced convolutional neural networks and we set the right folder as working directory which is this folder containing our cnn.py file that we're about to make and this dataset that we will explain in great details and that we will also pre-process in this tutorial. So as you can see this is no longer a CSV file because of course you cannot create a CSV file where you have your images separated by some commas. That wouldn't make any sense. So instead of having a CSV, I have a data set. I'm not going to open it right now, but basically what there is in this data set are all our images of cats and dogs. But this data set has a special structure, a structure that will make our life easier and the life of the CNN model easier as well. Because let's think about it for a minute. How can we make a training set and a test set where the independent variables are now the pixels distributed in 3D arrays and therefore not distributed like in the previous data sets where we had our independent variables in columns next to the final column that contained the dependent variable. Here, since our data set no longer has the structure where the rows are the observations and the columns are the independent variables and the dependent variable next to each other, then we cannot add explicitly the dependent variable in our data set because it wouldn't make much sense to add this dependent variable column along the 3D arrays representing the images. And you know, when we train a machine learning model, we always need the dependent variable to have the real results that are required to understand the correlations between the information contained in the independent variables and the real result contained in the dependent variable. But here, since we cannot add this dependent variable column in the same table, how can we extract the info of this dependent variable? Well, we have several solutions. A classic solution is to only have a data set containing our images, separated into different folders, a folder for the training set and a folder for the test set. And then, you know, since each of the images has a name, the name of the JPEG or PNG file, well, you know what we can do, and that's the first solution, is to name each of these images by the category of the image, that is cat or dog, and add, for example, a number to differentiate all the images. So that means that in each folder, the training set and the test set, we would get, for example, 5,000 images of cats that we would name cat1, cat2, cat3, cat4, cat5, up to cat5000, and then dog1, dog2, dog3, dog4, dog5, up to dog5000. And then that's where the solution takes place. We can write some kind of code to extract the label name cat or dog from the name of the image file, to specify to the algorithm whether this image belongs to the class cat or belongs to the class dog. And in some way we get our dependent variable vector because we can fill in this dependent variable vector with the label names that we managed to extract from the image file names of all our images. So that's the first solution, but that's not the one that we're gonna use because we have a better one and a more efficient one. And this better solution comes with Keras. Of course, we're using Keras. Keras is an amazing library for deep learning and computer vision. And of course, it contains some tricks and tools to import some images in a very efficient way. And that's the solution we'll use. And you'll see, you will be very happy to use it. Because basically to import the images with Keras, what we only need to do is to prepare a special structure for our data set. But it's a very simple structure as you are about to see right now. So what I'm gonna do is open this data set and you're going to find out about this special structure. So here we go, data set opened. Okay, so the first pillar of this structure is to separate your images into two separate folders. We already said that, a training set folder and a test set folder. All right, but that's not the trick. Remember, we want to have a simple way to differentiate the class labels, that is differentiate the cat images and the dog images. And so basically the simple trick that we can use here is to again make two different folders, one folder for the cats and one folder for the dogs. And that's how Keras will understand how to differentiate the labels of your dependent variable that is the real result, whether each of your images is the image of a dog or the image of a cat. Because then if we go into this folder, for example, the dogs folder, well, as you can see, I have some different images of dogs. This is a first dog, this is a second dog here, and a third dog, fourth dog. All right, this one is cute. Well, anyway, I have some images as you know them because they have 
the JPEG format. So that can be any kind of images you have on your computer. You know, you can take some pictures of your friends and replace these docs pictures by the pictures of your friends. And then you'll be able to train an algorithm that will predict which friend of yours is in the pictures. So that can be pretty fun to do, but remember you need a lot of images. All right, so basically we have pictures of dogs here. And then if we go back to the other folder, that's the same for the cats folder. In this folder, we have some images of cats. So that's the first cat, second cat, third cat, and etc. So this data set is a very well-known data set in computer vision. It can be used as a performance benchmark, you know, to test your deep learning models on this to simply see if you get some good accuracy. And so it's a very useful data set. So this data set here is actually a subset of the whole data set that you can find on Kaggle because the original whole data set contains 25,000 images. But here is just a subset since we have much less images than that. So let's see how many images we have. Well, it's going to be kind of the same as the business problem we had in the previous section. Because remember, in the previous section, we had 10,000 observations corresponding to 10,000 customers of a bank. And remember, in the data preprocessing part, we divided these 10,000 customers into the training set and the test set. And remember, the training set contained 8,000 customers and the test set contained 2,000 customers. Well, here, it's exactly the same for our cats and dogs images. We have 10,000 images in total. Then I put 8,000 images of dogs and cats in the training set and 2,000 images of dogs and cats in the test set. And then in the training set, I put 4,000 images of dogs and same for the cats, 4,000 images of cats. All right, and that's the same for the test set. Since the test set contains 2,000 images of cats and dogs, well, we have here 1,000 images of dogs. You see it's going from 4,001 to 5,000. So 1,000 images of dogs and 1,000 images of cats. All right, so to summarize, we have 10,000 images in total in the data set, 8,000 images in the training set, and 2,000 images in the test set. So that's an 80%, 20% split. Then in the training set, we have 4,000 images of dogs and 4,000 images of cats. And in the test set, we have 1,000 images of dogs and 1,000 images of cats. And basically, right now we did the big part of data preprocessing. I'm talking about the data preprocessing that we used to do in the first part in the previous models, because basically we already imported the data set. Then we don't need to encode any categorical data because of course our independent variables are in some way the pixels and the three channels. So there is no categorical data here and therefore we don't need to do any encoding. Then next section, splitting the data set into the training set and the test set. Well, that's the same here. Thanks to the structure of this folder, our data set is already split into a test set and a training set. So all good here. And then finally we get to the next and last section, feature scaling. And so do we need to apply feature scaling? Yes, we do. Remember what I said from the previous section, feature scaling is 100% compulsory in deep learning and especially computer vision. But you know, since this feature scaling section is associated to this whole data preprocessing part, and since we're not using this data preprocessing part, well, we will take care of feature scaling later, just before we fit our CNN to our images. And so the conclusion of all this is that there is no part one data preprocessing. Part one data preprocessing was done manually, and then we just need to do some feature scaling and image augmentation so that our deep learning models can run the most efficiently as possible. And therefore, since we won't use this part one data preprocessing, well, that means that the first part of our CNN model won't be data preprocessing, but directly, and that's the exciting thing about it because the data preprocessing part is the boring part. Well, the first part here is building the convolutional neural network. And here we go. We are ready to build it. And that's what we'll do in the next tutorial. Until then, enjoy deep learning.